Hi, I'm Pete, and this is the sticker reveal for the Very Puzzle Dirt V1.0 and a Very Puzzle Cord V1.0. And I am very happy to finally have these puzzles done, and now I'm ready to play. All right, we'll take a look at the uh, cord first. So I'm just going to slide the dirt out of the way. Now, the cord is a 26 axis puzzle. And the term cord comes from the axis systems uh, that are incorporated into the spherical puzzle. So the axis systems are the cube, the octahedron, and the rhombic dodecahedron. So this would be a, uh, if, if this was a cube, it would be a face turner, a vertex or corner turner, and an edge turner. And I'm not actually aware of any puzzle that has all of those features, any cubic puzzle. Uh, if you are, I'd really appreciate uh, hearing about it down in the comments. But uh, this is a really cool puzzle. I'm really glad they, uh, I, I finally have it all stickered uh, and I can uh, start playing with it. So it has these uh, octagonal faces and... Um, the, the sticker scheme that Very Puzzle uh, shows us on the website uses these uh, carbon fiber uh, textures and um, which gives a, an orientation and a, a specific placement to the different pieces. So that that's going to make it a slightly harder solve uh, than it would otherwise. Um, so we have the, uh, the octagon, um, the octagonal, yeah, the, the eight-sided uh, faces, uh, which... Uh, correspond to the uh, faces on a cube and then we have these uh, six-sided faces with course which correspond to the corners or vertices on a cube and it might be kind of hard to hard to visualize that but if you think of a, um, a Rubik's cube if you were to slice through a corner um, the resultant shape wouldn't wouldn't still still be a cube it would actually be a triangle Okay, and that's where you get this kind of this triangular uh, shape. And then finally, we have the um, edge equivalent of a regular uh, a Rubik's Cube, which would be more like, well, an edge turning a puzzle, and it's just uh, 180 degree turns. Now, in terms of the solve, uh, there will be some challenge because of the uh, carbon fiber textures in the various um places but it's a pretty um shallow cut puzzle so i don't think it's going to be super hard one thing i'm curious to know um before i scramble this for the first time is whether or not these corners can be turned uh if they can be turned if they can be rotated is what i mean to say uh, if they can be rotated then yes that's going to make it a a more challenging puzzle but um, my my initial thought on it is that i don't think we're going to be able to uh, to make them uh, turn. We might, actually. Um, I don't think so. Unless this jumbles. Uh, I don't think that's a legal turn. <laughs> okay, so that's the other thing about this uh, puzzle. You're going to have legal and illegal turns. And it's basically, uh, to make it... Um, simple, every face can, has to turn in increments of two. So this face... Um, if we look at this uh, edge right here, um, that's one step, and then that's another step. And that's that's a legal turn, okay? which means that this edge can be turned off here. Now, again, looking at the rectangular faces, or the, well, it looks square, uh, the square faces, um, what is a legal step is a 180 degree turn. And the stickering scheme uh, that they give us actually helps us to see that because um, we have the uh, hollow or the outline stickers lining up with the outline stickers. So if I only turn this 90 degrees, you'd see we'd have a solid sticker lined up with an outline sticker. So that's not a legal turn. It's not in a legal position. So I think that's really how they enforce this. Um, now for the... Um, hexagon faces which uh, correspond to the uh, corners I think um, yeah I don't think they enforce a, a turning but 
I don't think you can really do a, an illegal move on it. Yeah, it's just not going to let you do it. So it, it's going to make you do the legal move before it lets you move adjacent uh, faces. Yeah, so uh, again, I, you know, I think it's going to be an interesting solve because of the placement. Uh, you have to get uh, all of these pieces in their right positions, but I don't think you're going to have to rotate any corners, which makes it a little easier than some of the RT uh, puzzles where you can uh, rotate the corners because they have jumbling. However, this is Cord V1.0, and I have no doubt that we're going to see a, uh, a Cord V1 point something or V2 point something, and, and I have a feeling we might see some uh, more uh, designs using this uh, a puzzle platform. Okay, wow, this is really, really neat. I love the stickering on here, and... Um, I do have some bonus stickering content. If you watch after the main feature, I actually go into a lot of details on a sticker, uh, stickering and how I came up with this scheme and, and everything like that. Okay, so <laughs> this is the Accord V1.0. I'm really happy to have it. Looking forward to playing. Okay, so I'm going to put this one aside now because my table is going to get very, very crowded in a moment. The uh, next puzzle is the Dirt DIRT V1.0. This is a 62 axis puzzle. And Dirt is an acronym that stands for, uh, it, and the axis systems that this uh, puzzle incorporates, which is dodecahedron, icosahedron, and rhombic triacontahedron. So that's a lot of different axes, and that's why it has so many uh, turnable faces. Um, the, the main features, and it might be kind of hard to see, but it has um, it has uh, decagon faces, ten-sided faces. It has um, rectangular faces, and it has hexagonal faces. In this case, regular hexagons. Now, um, there are some rules uh, for turning on uh, this puzzle, and I think that the uh, sticker scheme, or the stickers themselves, uh, enforce the same kind of uh, a concept that the hollow stickers have to go to the hollow stickers. So, for the decagons, it's two steps, and you see hollow sticker to hollow sticker. So, in other words, I can't stop here. It won't even let me do that, but that's that shows me that this... Uh, faces out of step. So I have to go until uh, I'm lined up with the hollow stickers, outline stickers. Okay, so that's the way that the sticker scheme uh, works for you to, to keep you from uh, turning uh, things incorrectly. In this case, for the hexagons, if you try to do a, a one step rather than two, there's no way you can turn the adjacent faces. It just won't let you do it. So that's why um, it, it doesn't need the hollow stickers. And then finally, the rectangular stickers. Again, we have outline to outline. And if you do a half uh, turn, it's going to be pretty obvious that, this, that it doesn't line up. Okay. Now, the uh, dirt uh, sticker scheme uses the uh, mat. And it really is beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. I don't think there's going to be any issues with uh, corners being rotated on this. I'm pretty sure of that. So really, it's just a matter of placement. And given that uh, the, the uh, a lot of the pieces are equivalent, this one and this one could change place. It doesn't matter. And all four corners could probably change place. Well, actually, pairs of corner pieces could change place. And I don't think it's going to matter either. Now... Um, if the dirt puzzle actually, uh, if it looks familiar to, to you, um, that's not actually, um, <laughs> not a surprise because this uh, axis system um, is not new to very puzzle. In fact, they've, uh, they've used it quite a bit. Let's go back to the last 62 axis uh, DIRT puzzle that they made. And that is the awesome uh, truncated icosi, uh dodecahedron. There it is. That's the TI. And um, the TI puzzle is, is functionally identical to the dirt. 
Okay, so it's actually in a, it's in the TI shape though, as opposed to a sphere. And the sticker scheme is quite different. As you can see on uh, this, they have uh, solid colors for the Decagon faces and uh, they have solid colors for the, for the other ones. I This is a third party sticker set. So uh, I used uh, carbon fiber for the rectangular faces. Um, but it, it all works out to be um, pretty much the same and the solve between these puzzles is really not going to be much different um, it'll be um, Just a little different in that the these faces are not oriented. They don't have orientation uh, Whereas the decagon faces on the dirt do have orientation which will make just a small difference uh, So basically think of this as a super TI uh, because the faces have orientation uh, still, having said all that, I really think this is going to be a very cool and fun solve. These are shallow cut puzzles again, so they're, they're not super hard, um, but they are just a joy to uh, to play. And having such a big puzzle is just, uh, to me, is just very, very cool. Uh, also, um, the, the end game for this puzzle is uh, just a little complicated. Sometimes you end up with some corners that uh, uh, need to be placed. Uh, and likewise on here. And so if you are stuck until I come out with a tutorial for this, uh, you can actually look at the TI uh, tutorial that I have. But uh, this is, this was not very puzzles first crack at this uh, uh, truncated uh, Icosidota Cahedron. No, it wasn't. The first crack at it was this one, this classic puzzle, which is the VTI, the... Um, Void truncated Icosidota Cahedron with its wonderful rail system. Um, and it, in a, I mean, it really shows how innovative Very Puzzle has been over the years uh, in coming out with these different puzzles and these different access systems and the different uh, mechanisms. Um, just trying different things to see see what's gonna what's gonna work. Uh, these are also third-party stickers, the disco, <laughs> the disco stickers. Um, I have to say, when I first saw these stickers, I thought to myself, "Wow, this is uh, <laughs> this is going to be kind of uh, much." But uh, now that I've uh, I have the puzzle and I I put them on, it is absolutely wonderful. But yeah, these were third-party stickers. Okay, so uh, that then is that then <laughs> that is the uh, my very puzzle family. So these are all related. Um, this uh, the dirt I would say is uh, cousins to the TI and the VTI. You can see that uh, they're they're quite large puzzles. Now just to just to be fair, I'll take the stand off, uh, and you can see that the. Uh, the size is it's pretty close. I, I don't know exactly how close they are, but, but it is pretty close. Uh, the stand on your spherical puzzle is critical um, because if, if you don't have a stand, it's going to roll away on you and it will be a tragedy. Okay. Uh, the TI is just standing on one of its faces, I think, right now. Uh, actually, okay, now it's standing on one of its uh, one of these knobs. The knobs were to turn... It, it really is uh, a little over the top. It, they could have been turned this way, but I think the knobs do something for this this puzzle. And then the TI on its own. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, the stand I'm using for the cord is just a glass uh, candle holder, just like that. The edge is not sharp at all. I just get it from the dollar store here in Canada. Maybe you have some, some equivalent uh, yeah, that you can find. Okay, well that's it for the sticker reveal for the uh, Cord V1.0 and the Dirt V1.0. Uh, if you stick around after the uh, sign off, there's uh, all sorts of bonus content showing the stickering of these two beasts. If you want to see the assembly of the, the uh, Dirt puzzle, which came in 900 pieces, um, you can uh, watch that video. There'll be a link in the description. Meanwhile, I am uh, particularly interested to hear in the comments what you think of the evolution of the truncated Icosidotachahedron family from Very Puzzle. What do you think? Are they on the right track here? Uh, what do you think uh, they can do next with this uh, design? Let me know. And of course, as always, I appreciate any other comments or questions or suggestions uh, you want to put in the comments. 
And until next time, thanks for watching. All right, here's a little bit of bonus content for the dirt and cord. So I'm going to show a little bit of the stickering for both of these puzzles. And uh, where we are so far is that I have all of these scrap removed uh, for all of the uh, dirt uh, stickers. But uh, some of them are outlined, so I haven't removed the center parts. Uh, I'll just uh, remove the outer sticker when I apply it, and the, the, the scrap in the middle will stay. I've only uh, done one uh, scrap removal for the uh, cord. So uh, that's where I'm going to get started. Um, I'll start removing the scrap from the cord and uh, show a little bit of that. All right, I'm just going to kind of move these a little bit out of this, out of the way and start with the scrap removal. So I always like to have one and uh, that way I can sort of see what I'm up against. And uh, I see that I'm, I'm actually going this way, so that's important. Okay, now one thing I note is that there are a lot of very tiny pieces here, so I have to be careful to get those. And um, one of the th things, and I've, I've mentioned this tip before, uh, I always keep the scrap uh, after I've removed it. So I don't just ball it up and throw it away. I actually keep it uh, just stuck to something uh, just in case I lost a sticker on the scrap. It, it's, you know, one of those things you can just kind of help you out. And even if, for example, I damage a sticker, um, having a bit of scrap has actually helped me before uh, to uh, substitute, uh, make a little sticker out of the scrap. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Looks like we got everything there. So there you go. Uh, this doesn't have to be a super long ordeal, but it uh, does take some time. Well, there we go. And those are all of the stickers now for the cord. All right, we're back and uh, ready to start uh, stickering of the cord puzzle. I have all the scrap removed from the cord stickers. I put my dirt and uh, the its stickers off to the side. And I got the iPod pad off my desk because I don't really need it right on the desk. I am using it though to refer to the uh, stickering scheme. Uh, I don't always follow very puzzles stickering scheme, but I like this one for the uh, cord, so I'm just going to follow it. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay out the stickers. They show uh, two of the faces. They show all the stickers. And uh, one of the things I want to do is make sure that I have all the, the same colors and, and make whatever adjustments because I have had it where the uh, stickers were uh, just slightly different from what they had on their website. Uh, which, no, there's got to be a... Uh, yeah, I think we have that case. No, we don't. Not quite yet, anyway. I thought we were missing a sticker set. Okay, so that's, uh, that's some of them. Now, how do I figure out what goes with what? So there's at least one more face here. Let me see here. Whoop. All right, so, uh, okay, so they, they kind of show how these, uh, the two faces go together. So what I'll do is I'll just start stickering one face and then uh, we'll just, uh, once I get this one face done, then I'll figure out what the relationship uh, between this face and this other one is. So they're showing that we're starting right here. And I um, just want to try to understand this. Make sure I understand it. Okay. So, so what it is is kind of like that. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be like that. Mm-hmm. And 
around you. Okay, well, let's just get going then. Now, one thing that's kind of critical here, uh, once once they start, oh, okay, these are hollow stickers. Once they start, I have to be careful not to not to rotate the sheet because uh, there is a pattern here. The uh, carbon fiber uh, texture. Uh, so if I rotate it sideways, it will look wrong. This is part of the um, charm of these stickers because uh, it gives each uh, individual piece a specific uh, position even though they're all the same color. So it, it does increase the uh, the difficulty a little bit. So, there we go. And this is my my technique here. There we go. Okay. I wonder if that that's not a hollow sticker. No, it's not. Okay, that's very very tiny. Um, it is protected by a little ridge uh, around it, so I think that's going to be okay. Okay, and I think that this side one, yeah. So this edge here is actually has two pieces. Uh, it has two different colors, so that's that's actually good. That'll help to um, give the the edge a distinct orientation as well. Um, yeah, so the the very small pieces I think will be okay because oh, that looks are they solid? Yeah, it looks like those ones are solid. Um, yeah. It, because if, if they didn't have this ridge for the very small pieces, I would probably put some um, super glue down. There's nothing to stop me from doing it later, but. Okay. Yeah, I gotta be careful to absolutely make sure I get these right. Okay, this is uh, this is really cool. I, I, I like these stickers. So it looks like this is a solid yeah okay so the ones over here are solid so okay so the ones surrounding the hexagon oh, this is this is really neat okay and that's a little a little trickier to tell what's been uh, placed and what hasn't because the when a normal sticker sheet you you remove a, the uh, sticker <laughs> and it it's gone it leaves a hole but in this case the the inner part of the stickers are just are staying put it's a little harder to see <laughs> it's kind of funny really okay. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, I got to be real careful I don't rotate the puzzle. Or rotate the sticker sheet. Otherwise the pattern is not going to line up. And I've done that before. I've, I've just sort of, when I was uh, stickering a big uh, puzzle with a pattern on it, I rotated the puzzle, but I also rotated the sticker sheet. Um, and it caused a, quite a few pieces to be wrongly, the, the patterns were wrong, and I didn't really catch it right away. That's kind of unfortunate, but yeah, that happens sometimes. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now, so far so good. They do give you some extras. I'm pretty sure those are the extras, all of these ones around here. So I have to do these ones, and I really don't like um, going off to the left here. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to rotate both at the same time. I know this is 
yeah, I got to be careful doing that, but I think it's okay. I think we're far enough along here that it should be okay. This is... Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you, you can really tell some, a lot of thought went into these stickers and, um, you know, because sometimes you wonder if the stickers are just an afterthought uh, on some of the puzzles. And I know we've had in the past some really horrific stickers. I'm not talking about very puzzle. Um, their stickers have always, you know, at least they've always tried. Um, but certainly we've had some, some pretty bad stickers from, from other companies on otherwise good puzzles. And of course, very early on, I learned about the uh, third party uh, sticker sellers. Get, getting custom stickers. And I got a lot of custom stickers. Um, even my original Tut Manx, the original stickers weren't terrible on it, but the original Tut Manx, um, it was quite easy to make a an illegal turn. The mechanism didn't really stop you. So uh, there was a custom sticker set for that that it helped you at least visually tell when you You'd made an illegal turn. Okay, this is coming along here. Okay, how does that look? Now, I'm just gonna flip this. So I'm back to where I started. I'm gonna flip that and it it really looks like there's still quite a few left, but it's really just extra um, stickers, I guess, that they gave us. I'm looking at the pattern and it looks okay. Yeah, it looks really quite good. Um, these outline uh, stickers, it may be kind of hard to see the pattern. Um, yeah, I'm hoping, hoping that'll be okay. All right, well, that's uh, that's the first of many. <laughs> um, so now the next one, uh, if we're going to go this way, um, the next one will be the uh, blue, this uh, dark blue here. Yeah, and I think that's that's the way it's gonna gonna go, just just like that. Okay, awesome. So there we go, and then rotating it back to the way the reference photo and from very puzzle looks, that's what we have. Okay, so in order to put these other set of stickers in context, I'm just gonna uh, scroll over here. So I've just scrolled a little bit, and uh, what it has, so the pink and the lime green. All right, so the lime green right there. And then, yeah, the pink over there. Yeah, so that would be the brown. Okay, I think we got this. So, okay, so just for the sake of, of sort of making a little more progress here. I can see that this is the brown right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on and that might actually help me a little bit um, yeah, okay, I can see it. So I think what I'm dealing with is that the fact that there's there's two greens and they, they're not that distinct. Um, yeah, I think so, uh, in the middle here. Okay, well that that's great. I'm very happy to have that. And if I look at the reference photo, that actually looks really good. So, so now that I have that done, I can look at the reference photo and then try to find out where this went. Okay, so I think that's going to be good enough. I will put the purple right there. And I think that that will, 
that's enough to kind of get uh, get us going here. Okay, it's gonna look good. Whatever. I don't think it really matters too much. There we go. I just want to reproduce their their sticker scheme because the puzzle looks really good. But it looks like they've got photos of. Um, I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Maybe I'm just not really interpreting the colors because uh, there's two different greens. I might have used the wrong green to start or well the, the other green. Now they've got the greens mixed up. Reversed. Not to say I'm wrong or anything. Um, well I guess it would be wrong if I actually got the greens wrong. Anyway. It's fine. So for some of the other ones, what I tried to do is reproduce their color scheme and I found that um, they had changed a shade or two in the sticker set. And so, you know, that and that I guess that can happen either between, you know, prototyping and production or even maybe just during production they're cutting stickers and they're having a little trouble um, sourcing a particular shade. Okay, so yeah. Okay, and I don't know how many extra uh, colors they give us on these. Uh, that's the main reason I like to get uh, extra sticker sets, because it's happened a couple times on my rhombic uh, tut minks, it happened that uh, after I solved it a couple times, I noticed that there were some uh, shades I was mixing up uh, because they were too similar. Once you put them on the puzzle, they were too similar. So I changed uh, a couple of sticker f stickers around. I used, uh, yeah, I just changed a couple of faces using a spare stick sticker set. So. And it, it's much better. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was able to do it. So, and I think I'd already used up some stickers too and from that original set. I removed some. So what can happen, especially on big puzzles, where you have a lot of stickers, the... Um, Lighter and thinner stickers uh, tend to get darker when you put it on the puzzle. So you can have uh, red, for example, if I use that. Um, so you can have two different shades of red. Uh, and they look different. And then you put them on the puzzle. And the lighter shade uh, darkens down quite a bit. And it could end up matching the, the lighter shade. I mean the darker shade once it's on the puzzle. Okay, there we go. That's done, right? Looks like I'm done. Yep. Okay. So now that I have this established, um, I can go back to the other photo because I know where the red goes. Yes, there we go. Okay, and I think that this is going to work. Okay. Another one done, look at that. So now let me turn this till it matches the reference photo. There we go. That looks great and we're, yeah, okay. So that's what they did. They showed opposite sides of the puzzle. That makes sense. So now it's just a matter and so I did that and I did the other ones but I also added one um, section of brown in here. Fill that in. So now I'm going to look and see how this all fits together. Yeah, okay, so they had two different greens, but but one of the, like they had a lime green and a mid green. But this isn't a mid green, this is a, an, a drab, an olive green. That's what the issue was. So, um, so when I did the first face, I just picked the lighter one. Okay, so with that in mind, now, yeah, now this makes perfect sense. Yeah, this is definitely 
uh, the green. And um, I think this was supposed to be the mid green or the lime green and then the other one was a regular green, but you know what? Doesn't matter. Does not matter. So there we go. So we'll do this one and then I'll figure out what the other two will be. Uh, yep, shouldn't be a problem here. Okay, oh, this is great. Okay, and well, look at that. Ah, it's just really, really cool. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can figure out what the other faces are supposed to look like. Uh, let's see. Okay, well that's definitely gotta be silver. All right, well, you know what? That has to be silver, so I'll, I'll figure out the red uh, later on. All right, well, that looks good. That really, really looks good. Wow, look at that. Okay, so we're on to the end here. And so my choices are is that, um, which I, I kind of like that, and then the darker gray. I, I like this color better, so. Um, yeah, well, I don't, I like that color. I, I just, I, I think a splash of color here, a brighter color would be better instead of the gray. Okay, and that went on quite nicely. Okay, look at that. Put the, put the cover on. I got one sticker left over. Uh, so a spare. And there you go. That is the cord, C-O-R-D-V 1.0. And now we can look at that, right? And uh, I see that the pattern is symmetrical, so that's something to be uh, interesting. I've used that on some of these other puzzles. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the case for all of them. Uh, but man, that turning is really nice. I, I really like that. Yeah, wow. I, I really like that turning. This is really my first chance to turn it because... Okay. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Okay, well that was the that's a cord uh, stickered, and um, then uh, I guess the next one will be the dirt. So let me just go take a break, and we'll come back and we'll start uh, stickering in dirt. All right, we're back, and uh, don't worry, you haven't missed anything. Uh, the uh, cord finished stickering that and now I've moved on to uh, start the stickering process for the dirt DIRT V1.0 What I've done so far is I put the stickers into piles of five um, that uh, go together in, in a color palette and my idea and it's kind of a flawed idea I realized afterwards but it I'll tell you what the idea was um, color theory allows us to pick uh, a, a, a color and then uh, pick other complementary color, the colors that, that go with it in a kind of a palette. So uh, what I do is I, I got an app that does that. You take a photo of, of one of the colors and then it gives you ideas for what the other uh, colors in the set should look like. In this case, I asked it to make me five. Now, you know, these are not super close matches. Um, but they're, I think they're good enough. So the idea was that the decagons on, on the dirt um, are separated into five sections. And they just have nice uh, clusters of colors that all go together using this uh, color palette idea. Well, the flaw is that these sticker sets, they're actually centered on the uh, rectangular face. So they, they don't just go on it on one decagon, they actually go on two decagons at a time. So in other words, if I have a nice color palette here, um, part of the color palette for this one's gonna be here, but then this one will also get the color palette for that one, that one, oh, that one, and that one. You, you, you get the idea. So, so that's the flaw in my, in my thinking. Um, but you know what? I, I'm going to give this a try anyway. I'm going to put one of the color 
um, stacks on uh, to the all of the rectangular faces around one of the decagons. And then I'm just going to see what happens when I try to use one of the other ones. Okay, so so it's it's not a terrible idea. It just was was slightly flawed, not 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 great. Okay, so I'm just going to stack those up here. We had a couple left over, and in fact, I actually like these two colors a little better than some of these other ones. But the nice thing about this app that I have, uh, and it's just an app I bought. It, it's not something that uh, uh, you know I'm sponsored or anything. I just found it. So I'll put a link in the uh, description. Uh, to that app, but basically if you have a couple of colors that you like in the palette, you can lock them and then it, you ask it to generate, uh, to fill in the other three colors if you're looking for a five color uh, palette. So it's kind of a cool app. All right, so this is where we're starting and my base color was this, uh, was this purple here. We don't have to worry too much uh, for this particular application about putting uh, similar shaded colors very close together because I'm pretty sure that, um, that all of the uh, pieces, I'm, I'm not positive here, but I think all the pieces that have uh, would have colors next to each other, they have uh, two colors on them. So you'll always be able to tell. And uh, anyway, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, on some puzzles, uh, if you get equivalent pieces mixed up and there are close shades of colors, it can cause problems and it does cause problems. I don't think that can happen on the dirt. All right, well, let's get started here. This is, uh, this is fun. Uh, this is really, it's a little stressful to come up with the color palette. But, you know, I, I don't really know. I, I only got one set of stickers and usually my uh, backup plan whenever I'm designing a color scheme is just to say, well... If I mess it up, I, I've got another pack of stickers and I can change some faces around. Well, I don't really have that option this time because I only got the one pack of stickers for some reason. Probably because I'm going to do it right the first time. Uh, and th the number of times I actually do go around and, and make substantial changes is very small. I really don't usually do that. Uh, yeah, I very rarely make big changes to the color scheme. Okay, so there we go. Um, so these, uh, the dirt also has recessed stickers. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Um, so uh, the, the stickers go go right in there, and uh, they're they've got a they're sort of uh, yeah recessed. Uh, which means they'll be a little more durable. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, and I just discovered that these are outline stickers here. So take those ones off. Uh, yeah, so I'll do I'll do one just kind of from from a distance here, and then uh, then I'll move the camera in so you can get a, a little better close up uh, view. Now there's a lot of um, adhesive residue on this one. It might look like it's torn or something. It's just adhesive residue. It's not a big deal. It'll uh, wear off pretty quickly once I start handling the, uh, the puzzle. Okay, I just didn't like the way that was. It wasn't really... The sticker's a little smaller than the, than the piece, and I really have to decide now how I'm going to position it, whether it be right in the middle or to one side or the other. So I'm going to try and just put it in the middle of the piece. I think that should be good. Okay, I'm getting a little, um, because the middle stays, it's my strategy of just looking for the blank spot to know what I've done is uh, getting derailed a bit, but it'll be fine. Okay, I don't have to worry too much about a texture on these stickers or they're a matte vinyl. Nice. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to go in the middle there. Um, you know, it's just really, it's it's your own aesthetic. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Okay, so I just, I don't want to get, get too far away here. So for these split ones, though, I am going to go kind of close to the, I'm going to push it up against one end um, so that there'll be a fairly strong line in the middle. We'll see how that looks anyway. Okay. 
And I, I will point out that they do give us quite a few extra pieces here, so extra stickers. Uh, for in, in the past, I've had stickers where the outline stickers, um, they've had just the way they were cut, they, they would tear quite easily. So, um, but I haven't had, I mean, this is fine. I haven't had any issues at all with these. Okay, that's, uh, that looks, it looks okay. It's, there we go. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, adhesive residue. It's just some stickers get that. Uh, but that'll go away pretty quickly. Just help it along here. Okay, well, I, I, I like that color. So let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, the stickers really make a puzzle, you know. Now, that uh, gurgling sound you hear in the background, that's my refrigerator. Okay. So, for shorter videos, I just uh, I unplug it, uh, just so it doesn't, you know, doesn't wreck my uh, audio. But for for fairly long videos like this, I really can't unplug my fridge. It make, make my milk get warm. So, yeah, it, I think it's going to be okay. Just it, it is a fairly noisy fridge. I don't know what. It, it's relatively cheap, but it's very small. So, you know, whatever machinery is in there, there's, there's not a lot of insulation, noise insulation anyway. There we are. Yeah, yeah, these little. Some of them were like this, and, and they were actually um, the excessive uh, adhesive. Some of them were actually kind of sticking together. So there's more than just this one that has that problem. It's it just a, it just really only affects you when you're putting the stickers on, uh, because it got this extra goop around the edges, but. Uh, once once you get playing with the puzzle, it just goes away quickly. Okay, now this is not really the way I like to put this type of piece on, actually. So I'm just going to rotate everything here. That's kind of disorienting, but... Alright, um, not 100% sure I want to do it this way, but we'll see. This is a very complex uh, sticker, like this one sheet. There's a lot of different stuff on it. Okay, what, I, what I'll do is I'll get a soft brush to brush all that adhesive away. It looks a little kind of ugly right now. Alright, not 100% sure I'm going to be able to get it from this side, but let's just give it a try. Okay, nope. I don't know if I really gave it a good try. <laughs> I just I just gave up pretty quickly. Um, it's just because with such that this curvature, I just really wanna just wanna be able to line it up without too much fuss here. Okay, and then we'll put it back the way it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I got four of them. I, for some reason, I thought I'd only put, I, I'd already put just two down or something. Anyway, 
All right. Yeah. So yeah, the sticker sheet doesn't look like we've used a lot, but that's what it is. Okay. So first one. So the idea then that they're arranged kind of uh, in reverse order, and I'm just going to go around like this. Oh, go around like this, so that the the these small edges uh, will actually have a two. So there's really no risk. This will be purple and pink, and then this one over here will be uh, pink and purple, um, but it'll be very clear uh, what. Uh, you know, which goes where. I don't think that there's a risk of, of swapping around these pieces. Okay. All right. So here we go. I am wondering just a bit. I don't think I'm going to do it because it's probably, probably quite time consuming. I'm just wondering what it would be like to take the middles out. Nah, it, it's going to be very time consuming to do that. All right, here we go. Nice vibrant yellow. Okay, there we are. So just as long as these lines are straight, that's it'll look good. Yeah, so the TI this is just going to be basically the TI solve. However, because of the different uh, sticker scheme, it will be just a little bit different. Uh, which is to say, not a super hard solve. Okay. So if I don't have a tutorial for this one out, by the time they're watching this and you, you want to scramble it up, you uh, my TI tutorial or VTI tutorial would work. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. That's everything. <laughs> Since again, it's hard to tell compare it to the one I already used. Well, look at that. That is really looking cool. Ah, lovely. <laughs> okay. Onwards here. So, okay, we'll see how that, yeah, we'll see how that looks when I get the next thing on. All right. Well, indeed, look at that. We got our first uh, five sticker uh, sticker sheets done. And I think it looks really sharp. So uh, I'm going to take a break now, but uh, why don't I just, uh, before I do that, take a look at what my next sheet's going to be. And so theoretically, if I say, if I started here no i can't actually it would actually be here so i'd be putting the sheets around here but what it would mean is that wherever i started whichever one i started on uh it would be sharing it with that and then whichever one i oops whichever one i end on now i have to figure out which way we, we go wherever i ended up we'll be sharing it with with this one right here so it is a kind of an interesting a challenge. I think it's going to be okay to do it that way, actually. I really do. So I just pick this one, go around, and I'll just pick my starting and ending colors so they look good on those two, and so on and so on, right? <laughs> ah, gonna be gonna be cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna take a break. All right, we're back, and uh, time to uh, take a look at the the next step here. Now, uh, I had uh, talked about. My original plan uh, for the stickering, I uh, had it had it all worked out, and uh, then I realized that uh, these stickers actually um, the, the same color is on two different decagon faces. So that kind of changes things just a bit. But in a case like this, where I have say I have a purple here and a purple here, I could actually substitute see this purple, and I could just use use this one instead of that one and then apply them and it would actually look pretty good. The only thing there is that uh, 
whatever I put on here is also going to go here. It gets to be a pretty complicated uh, challenge, I think. Anyway, so I'm not sure if going with the uh, original sticker uh, uh, color palettes that I uh, picked out, I'm not sure if that's really going to uh, be uh, workable or not. I, I, let me, I have to think about this. I, it might be okay. Because I have the pink here and I have the pink there. So that might work. Well, no, that's not going to work. Yeah, actually, that, that's, that's the opposite of working. Because, okay, I can replace this purple. Uh, this blue. Oh, actually, that, that's actually going to work. You know what? I think I could do this. So basically, the orange would be there. It's kind of a... Uh, and so pink and orange, kind of uh, something I would have to figure out what, what kind of color palette that would be. Yeah, you know what? I might be able to make this work. Um, the other thing I discovered is that I do have another sticker set for this. I wasn't sure if I had a second sticker set, but I actually do. So uh, I think things are going to actually be, be okay. All right, so um, with that in mind, uh, I'm just gonna get started. I'm just gonna apply the second sticker set uh, to an adjacent uh, face. Um, I might actually just see about, um, yeah, see what exactly this color this color palette should be. Maybe see if I if this orange really does go there. If I need to uh, move things around a bit more. All right, so uh, we're back and I've had a chance to uh, run uh, the, these, uh, this color through the um, palette generator and I came up with uh, four colors that go quite nicely with this. And uh, that's, I think, the best I'm gonna be able to do um, in, in terms of, of coming up with a color scheme. I, I hope it works, but as I say, I do have a second sticker set. So if it turns out horribly, I think I'll be all right. So it's kind of cool, actually, that even though this first one was a, was a fairly big task, this next um, set, I only have four to apply. So it'd be kind of nice. All right, here we go. That looks good. I, I really like that. So this is another one I'll set aside. And um, so let me see what I can do for this cap here. It may well be that's just how the caps are. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, it's just... Okay, now I gotta keep keep track of where I was here. So the the face I'm working on is here, but by necessity we're gonna involve this, this adjacent face. So when I go to sticker this, I'm gonna have to put those two colors into my palette uh, generator out, uh, uh, app, and then see if it'll give me three more to fill in. I, that's that's probably the best I can do really. So. But I think this is going to look great. It does seem like it's sitting up a little high. Ah, I don't think so, but... Okay, so let's go back here and uh, just go go in order. Okay, I'm just move this so that it's visible. I know I'm sort of covering it up a little bit, but it's just... Yeah, sort of trying to find a compromise between showing and uh, and being able to do a neat neat sticker in. All right, wow, that one's done too. I think that's looking really good. I, I'm I'm really happy with this. And and I think the adjacent you know these adjacent colors I think it's gonna work. All right, let's just press on. I just got two more of these to put on here. All right, wow. That really, really looks cool. That's fantastic. 
Okay. Well, on to the last one. Uh, in this on for this face, and then we'll have two of the uh, 12 decagons done. It doesn't seem like much, but you know what? Every step, one step at a time, that's how you get them done. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I may not have the energy this week to do a marathon uh, a stickering, but I just, just have to do one or two every day, and it's, it's just going to go really fast. Eventually, it'll get done. This is a really bright, it's a, I call it lime green. It's a really, it might be more properly called neon green. Okay, that's just a little bit off. Yeah, it's really nice. I think it's gonna, it's just gonna give that little section a nice little pop. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. Look at that. Hmm. All right, that really, really looks cool. Oh, wow, I can't wait to play with this puzzle. I think this looks fantastic. It's going to be just just a really fun puzzle, a really interesting conversation piece. Okay, well that's uh, that's it. I got I really have to take another break. I know it was only uh, one more uh, deck gone, but hey, um, you know we're we're making some progress here. Um, while I take uh, a break, I'm going to uh, maybe figure out what I can do with something like this. See what I can. Uh, what other colors I can put in there. All right, we're back. And um, I'm going to continue uh, stickering on this face. Uh, now, uh, what I did um, uh, during the break was uh, put these two colors into my uh, color palette app and it uh, produced uh, some more uh, colors. Uh, th th similar to these, it's not perfect, but quite similar to these. So I'm just gonna go put, uh, put these on and that'll be one more face. So uh, now the high-pitched wine you hear in the background, unfortunately, that's my fridge. Uh, it just it's really challenging to uh, turn the fridge off for long periods of time. So we're just going to have to kind of put up with that uh, for a shorter video. I would, but uh, that's a thing. Okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, I know on video it sort of seems like it's just been sitting here, but actually um, it did take a fairly long break. Don't think I actually did anything on this puzzle yesterday. Um, work is very, very busy. Long days, so. Uh, but now I have a bit of time to relax. So we'll get this done. And uh, I do have some other uh, stickering to do. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually going to be a lot of stickering over the next little while. <laughs> Always goes like that, it seems. Okay, yeah, that's going pretty well. Now this is not... There we go. I'm just lining this up a little better. Uh, okay, yep. And I guess I usually start with this the square, don't I? Or the rectangle. Oh my goodness. I don't know. So yeah, I don't uh I it may seem kind of daunting putting all these stickers on without really having the color scheme worked out fully in advance, but I've done this enough times long enough that 
I'm not really worried about it. I know that I'll be able to make it work. It'll look good. And if there's a couple phases that are really wrong, I do have uh, a couple extra colors in this kit. And I have a another set of these stickers. So I really, it, it would be very unlikely to need those. Um, the number of times I've actually had to uh, use the second sticker set are, are pretty small. As a matter of fact, the main time I had to use a sticker set was on a carbon fiber textured puzzle where most of the faces were were textured. And I had uh, just really botched it when it came uh, in terms of keeping the alignment of the small uh, uh, pieces, keeping the texture alignment. I just, it was just something I overlooked. So I managed to sticker the puzzle in quite a few of the the corners <laughs> were, were wrong. So after trying to fix it uh, a little bit, I was able to fix a few faces, but then the ones I couldn't fix, I just uh, re-stickered uh, with a new set, with a spare set. So it does happen, but as I say, the, the number of times it's actually happened are very, very sp small over the years. Uh, I've changed a couple of faces before when um, the the actual color on the puzzle just was was a little too close the two faces or um, yeah or something like uh, a, as an example a concrete example let's say you had pieces that were red and yellow and in two different places on the puzzle you had red and yellow faces adjacent to each other and the reds and the yellows were such that they were close right so you know, sometimes you can say, well, that's just a, it's just a challenge. But in this case, it was just annoying because it kept happening. I kept, kept having problems as a result of it. So that's, that's where I, I replaced one of the, one of the colors. And so the, the sticker scheme wasn't quite as nice uh, as a result, but, eh, sorry. Didn't really hurt anything. Oh, I, don't know. I think I'm losing the recipe here. Yeah. Okay, this is this is inter an interesting. These two blues actually look very nice together. I, I like that. Oh, and I see I've missed uh, an edge over here, so we'll do that after. Okay, now I'll try to get this one. <laughs> I was trying to get the, the corner to attach. I don't know, it's, uh, it's been quite rainy here lately, but the, it's cooled off, so the air is quite dry. That's why I'm getting all this static electricity, so. Okay, now what's going on here? Okay, I think, um, I remember... Uh, speculating earlier about why they, they went with outline stickers. I think one possibility in just looking at that that application I just did is, is maybe they look better on curved puzzles. Big stickers may look better on curved puzzles when they're uh, outline. It helps them lie a little flatter. don't know. Anyway, that, I'm, I'm really happy with that. That's really looking sharp, I, I have to say. Wow. Okay. A little bit of a blue blue thing going on, but then we got purple and pink over here. I think that's that's really quite good. Wow. All right. Well, let's get uh, get some more of these done. I'll just bring this over a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's let's try to get back to the way I was doing it. 
Oh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, so I could have powered through doing this, um, doing the stickering. Uh, and sometimes if I, if I really want to get something done for some reason, uh, I will power through. But mostly I just want to take my time, relax, and enjoy the process. You know, it's it's not a, you know, there should be no real pressing reason to get the, get the stickering done. Okay. Now, I actually do have a bit of motivation to get this done. But still, the motivation is that I... I have some new puzzles like since I've gotten this puzzle and it took me a while to put this together and of course I, f I videoed the uh, the assembly and now I'm videoing the uh, stickering and the uh, but I've gotten a really surprisingly large number of puzzles have arrived um, so uh, some puzzles I ordered quite some time ago just kind of showed up, which is great. These puzzles got stuck in the mail uh, when when the mail shut down earlier this year, so it, it took many months, but here they are. Um, and so I'm getting, I've gotten two packages over the last little while of, of really cool puzzles. So kind of would like to get on with unboxing them and and stickering them but <laughs> uh, but it, it, again I, I just want to enjoy the process and if it takes a little extra time to, to get to the stickering of those puzzles that's fine or the unboxing even so now there's nothing stopping me from doing an unboxing but then I'm all set up to sticker this and I'd find that kind of disruptive having to move everything away and so one thing at a time that's what I say now this this face is turned just a little bit yeah okay and it's funny that it's only when the stickers get on it that it really becomes obvious all right and then we'll just do the turn it right around. So yeah, so the recess stickers will also make it a little safer, not completely safe, but a little safer to put it on a stand, puzzle on a stand. You'll notice I'm not being too uh, too concerned. I'm I'm just sort of dragging the puzzle uh, on its stand as I'm turning it. But once I get all the stickers on it, I am going to be a bit more careful and. Uh, I'll pick it up and turn it rather than just kind of rotating it while it's, it's sitting on the stand. Um, I know some some of my online uh, uh, puzzle friends were, were wondering if uh, the glass holders that I use, if they could damage stickers. And I looked at them. The edges are not that sharp, the glass candle holders that I use as stands. But it is something to to look at and I've seen some in the store that were quite sharp I uh, always want to check them before I before I get them this is a good you know it's just a good thing to think about um, and I think candle holes really can't be sharp if they were they they they'd cut the candle definitely a safety hazard okay it's not gonna work all right, we'll, we'll get this. We'll get it. No rush. No hurry. All the time in the world. Okay, whoop. So. All right, well, that, that sticker just, I mean, just fills up that space. So it's a nice fit. It's really, I really like it. Huh. Um, yeah, so one of the things I've looked into in the past is, you know, making my own stickers, right? Because you can get a machine that'll cut them for you and get vinyl and then you can sort of pick your own patterns, colors, you can try different shapes, stick, sticker mods, so Sure, it seems like a, an interesting thing, but it's just, I don't know, I think it's for, for me, you know, I might do it someday, I guess, but 
I'm content with just ordering stickers from people. I've had some really good uh, experiences ordering stickers from the different third-party sellers. And so far it's been, been fine. You know, it's like maybe I'll get a sticker set and it's like maybe a couple little things I'd like to change, but uh, you don't want to go back to them. And so maybe that would be make it tempting to have my own, but then maybe if I had to do all the work, I wouldn't be <laughs> redoing sticker sets either to change one little thing. Okay, that's just... Okay, wow, I think I pushed that down a little too hard. Okay, it's just, it's a little crooked. Okay, there we go. Yeah. All right, well, you know what? It is crooked. Okay, I'm going to try and get it. There we go. So sometimes you can you can actually push the sticker sideways if it hasn't quite set yet. Um, but in this case, it was the, the top was moving, but the bottom was not not moving because I'd stuck it down a little too hard. Okay, there we go. All right, and that was worth it. Uh, to me, it's worth it. I know it's just one one sticker and in the grand scheme of things. No one's going to notice. And there's probably worse stickers. There's probably more crooked stickers on here, but. Uh, you know, if I notice it and it bothers me, I, I want to try and fix it as, if I can, so that I won't be bothered by it. Oh, okay, that's not. Yeah, so there's going to be a, a slight change. Some of these, the gap is going to be a little different because I've moved from being really close to the uh, the edge to, to being back a little further, so. But it's okay. It, it again in the grand scheme of things, not going to matter. And and if if it does bother me that some of them are some of these gaps are wide and some are not, I can always go back because I have spare uh, stickers on the sheets. Okay. Wow. The, another one done. Just kind of lost in the process, and suddenly it's done. I'm really happy with that. Okay. One more here. It's nice, it's a kind of a mid, what I would call a mid-red. Not quite an orangey red, but it does sort of have a little bit of a orange vibe. So I think it will look good right there. Um, yeah, you know, now looking back, I'd say, you know, if I flip that, if I flipped this color and this color, it might give a better separation of the colors. Uh, but I think we're, I think we're okay. And I don't, don't think I need to flip anything. Looking at this, you wouldn't have to redo all the stickers if you wanted to flip a face, because like all of these pieces could be moved. Um, so it would only it would only be some of the pieces. It wouldn't be all of them. It would have to be restickered. Anyway, let's not talk about stuff like that now. We'll just g get on with it. Okay. Just okay, it's a little crooked for my liking. There we go. Okay, and then we'll have one more face done. So, yeah, so it's gonna get. Uh, I had no idea when I was setting up these sticker palettes the, the first time how it was gonna look the stickering process. I really hadn't thought it through. So <laughs> I guess uh, I've learned, but it's okay. You know, I think I've evolved a little bit over the years as a, as just putting on stickers. I remember one puzzle in particular, a very big puzzle, one of my first big sticker projects where there was no, there was no guidance on what the sticker, um, stickering scheme should be. So I literally made a paper model of the puzzle and uh, took the uh, the sticker set I had, made color photocopies <laughs> and and applied the and tried the different like stuck the, the color copies of the stickers. They weren't 
super accurate color colors, but it was enough to give me a sense. Uh, and I have pictures of all of that. I what I did was I took pictures of different color schemes and eventually came up uh, with it. I have to go back and, and see which <laughs> which puzzle that was. It was really it was a fun project, but it was a lot of work. Uh, but the the sticker scheme came out great. I have to say. So I but I don't do that quite as much anymore. Well, I definitely don't do that. Uh, and then I used to do the hot and cold schemes, which is for smaller puzzles. It's it's not too bad. Uh, but you know that's also a bit cheap because you pretty much end up with the same uh, the same look to the puzzle puzzle each time you do that. And then, of course, the old, you know, getting out the color wheels and, and using complementary colors. And there are different theories for, for coming up with palettes. And, in fact, this is what the app that I'm using, this is what it does. It has, I think, five different uh, color theories that it'll use to give you uh, colors. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not being consistent. I'm cycling through them until I find colors that match what I have and that I find look good so of course what would be really useful is being able to put all of the stickers into the app and then having it come up with it but I think that's a little more advanced it's not quite what these color apps are are designed for I think these color palette apps are designed for like decorating and, and maybe clothing and stuff Okay, now I hope I haven't ripped that sticker because it was not cleanly cut. It looks like you did rip it, actually. Hmm. All right, well, uh, rip sticker, depending on, on where the rip is, may not be bad. And I have a spare, so I'm going to put it down, and then we'll see what it looks like. I think it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, I just got to make sure it's laid down smoothly here. Okay, I've smoothed it out a bit. Yeah, you can see it, but I, I think in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Okay, if it bothers me, I can go change it later, but I think I'm okay for now. Yeah, just the corner of the inner part wasn't uh, snipped off. So, yeah, I was talking about the uh, color palette app. So, yeah, I think it's for decorating or, you know, picking out uh, clothing styles or, or something like that. It might be for art. Uh, but, it, you know, for stickering a big complex puzzle here, I think it we're kind of not using it in the way that it was, you know, optimized for. Okay, what did I do here? Okay. Okay, so I think that's the part that needs to move. Sticker's not laying flat. There we go. Look at that. Okay. So, but it is very helpful and it didn't, you know, it cost a couple bucks, I think four dollars maybe. Canadian dollars. So, yeah, I, ideally it would let me put all the stickers in and then I could pick, pick them. It's not quite like that. Uh, but it does let me put the stickers in, the ones I'm using for a particular phase. And then I can put those ones in and then ask it to come up with ideas for the, the other stickers. And then I can look through my pile. And, and as I find each one, I can lock it and then um, ask it to pick again once I've found my color, the colors I'm going to use. So that, that's how it works. Yeah, very slick. Okay, I have a feeling I, I stickered this from 
No, I guess I must have flipped it over at some point. <laughs> I'm getting lost in my thoughts here. Okay, same problem I had before. The sticker's a little crooked at the top. Yeah, I think putting it on from the bottom is from the wide part is, is what's causing the issue. <laughs> All right. That'll do. There we go. Look at that. That is marvelous. So that's the latest face I've done. And uh, it's just, it's incredible to see how far this has uh, come along here. So um, with this face then, I have additional um, stickers here with the two blues down there. Um, and then I've got the yellow and red here. So it really does uh, kind of... Um, influence of stickers here influence this face and the other faces kind of a neat thing all right i'm going to mess around with that app and try and come up with a, a palette for this uh, face over here okay so there's what it's showing me so these two are locked and now i'm going to pick the blue um, which could be that. That looks good. And then I got to generate the other two so the black's not going to work. The dark blue, I don't really have it. Okay, hmm. This pink might work. Actually, this is quite dark, so I think that'll work. And then the pink, let's see if I can find something else. Don't really have that yellow. Okay, and then a very dark blue, which we don't really have. No. Okay, no, I'm just not really gonna, gonna go. A very light blue. I think we have a very light blue. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll work quite nicely, okay? So those are the three that'll go here. All right, well, I uh, put these two colors in my little app and it came up with uh, the, the rest of the colors to fill in here, so that'll be good. Uh, but before I before I go on and put those on, uh, what, I, what I would like to do, um, because these two colors will now be part of that, uh, I wanna put this color in the app and that color and sort of see what's going to come out of this, just in case I need to adjust things. I'm, for example, running out of blues here. So uh, I think I will do that. I'm not sure if I can really. All right. So there's the, there's the, that shows these ones, the palette. And this is the color that I want to uh, start with over here. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to save this, save it to favorites. What I want to do is put this color in, and I don't know if I have it. I may actually have it. Yes, I do. So I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick that one. Yeah, save color to favorites. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so now I have my mid orange. I'm going to put it there from pick color, and uh, it it has mid orange there. Then the second one is going to be this light blue because that's what's coming down here. So I'm going to go pick color and it's a light blue. Um, so now I have those, whoops, I have th these two. So I'm going to lock that one and lock that one. And now I can generate the rest, the rest of these, you see? So this color right here looks exactly like that. So I'm going to say that that's my color. So I'll lock it. And then this, this color is actually not too far away from this. So I think that I'll, I'll pick that as, as the, whoop, I meant to lock it, uh, which means I only have one to go. And I'm just hitting generate. It's not really doing so well. It's I've got a gray there. Hmm. 
Actually, that gray isn't too bad, so I think I'll go with that. Okay, and that's it. So the this one isn't quite a close match, but it's it's not bad. So those will be the colors I'm going to use, starting with the orange, clockwise around there for this part. And I already have those colors as well, starting from there clockwise. I'm just going to save this palette. And uh, the only thing is it doesn't show you the names you've already used. Um, so I'm hoping I haven't I haven't used that one. Okay, and that's only if I have to go back and refer to it. Okay, so that was great. And now I have the colors for two faces all worked out. So I'm quite pleased with that. All right, and that's the first one. And, and this is the face. I can't lose sight of that. And it, this is going to be interesting to see what I do over here. But but this is, um, yeah, this is the, the layout here. So this last sticker sheet is an example of why I always keep the scrap because one of those pieces uh, looks like it uh, came off. Now, I do have an extra one there, but uh, I'm not above going and seeing if I can find it on the scrap. This is the scrap right here. Now, it was safely hanging up. Uh, I had to move it for some other purpose. And there's the sticker. I can actually see it. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, look at that. Uh, I'm just, just, wow, I, I'm really happy with this. It's just that I think it's turning out great. I'm just really, really happy with it. Wow. And I kind of like, um, because I've, I've worked in this area and this area, I kind of like going this way a little bit. I, I think the way I did it before, where I came up with the color palette for one of the, phases and then immediately went up uh, to the color palette for the adjacent face. I like that and I think I'm going to use that idea here. Now I, I think I've already uh, said it before the idea of the two uh, blues beside each other but you know I think it's okay. I, I really do. Um, I don't think it's going to be going to be a, a showstopper. If I if I have to I can swap those. It's not too. It's actually not bad because because this blue definitely would go there and that would, would fit quite nicely there. I'm just going to go with it. So yeah, so uh, on the break, I'm going to find out the last two um, colors that should go in there. And then I might work out something over there. All right, we're back. And I uh, had a nice little break there. And I've worked out what a couple other colors might be for this, uh, this face. So we've got that. And uh, we're over halfway done here with the stickering. This is a really really big stickering task now i had a little bit of concern about putting the the pink here against the purple but i think it's okay and really if i went over here i'd, I'd also have a couple of those similar colors so i think i think it'd be fine okay and um yeah this is just gonna get get going here let me just i'm gonna move this over a bit a better view. So, okay. Now, well, enough of that. Okay, that looks good. It's a sort of, I didn't intend to do it, but it does look like a kind of a, there's a warm over here and a bit cooler over here. Um, wow, that that's just fantastic. I, I really like that. Okay, so I had those. Now this is going to be this is going to be an interesting because I got two there and I got two there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Maybe I'll try to get both of these just to see what I can come up with. All right. Well, we're getting towards the uh, end of the stickering here. I've uh, worked out the colors for uh, this. Uh, group of colors here this group this face <clears throat> okay and it's actually this one goes here because I've already also worked out the colors for that and then um, yeah so I think actually if we go 
we just sort of do it this way, it's going to go around. Uh, yeah. Okay, and I didn't actually work out this face, but uh, I think the blue will actually be quite good there. Okay, yeah, it is getting a little uh, challenging uh, towards the end, and I may not use the palette uh, generator uh, for the last couple faces. I might just wing it. Okay, I'll just move everything over. Oops. Just move everything over a little bit here for a better view. There we go. Okay, yeah, so another nice break, and uh, I'd like to try and, I know I said I didn't really feel that I needed to push through here, but I, I do want to get this done, so hmm, this, this rectangle seems to be a little, a little bigger than the other ones, maybe, don't know. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it sort of seems to be coming rather. All right, another one. Look at that. Okay. Okay, and that, and then that, and then these ones, and those ones. So, gonna actually make quite a bit of progress here. I'm a little bit uh, troubled by the blue and this. I'm going to skip this for now. I'm going to put the brown in. Um, yeah, because I really, uh, I, I think there might be a better color to put in there. Okay, there's the brown on that. Let's let's have a look here. So um, I just for now I just put this one aside because this is this blue can can go in a lot of places. So if I can find something else that looks good there, I might just hang on to this and use it in some other parts of the the puzzle. Because I I know I have a few greens and I have a few few pe uh, shades that I really want to use up, so I don't get too many. Uh, odd shades together okay and then this up here um, we were going to put one two and I think that's how it goes all all right nice nice indeed Okay, and then, then we have that one. Now what's left? Ah, this is gonna be something. So there's, there's, there's no blues left. Uh, some pretty bright colors here, which is something I need to, need to kind of consider. Um, Oops. Okay, I think that this blue was indeed supposed to go here. I think it might be okay. Let's take a look. I could either put this blue here or I could put this other, this brown. I think that would look good. What do you think? Because it's dark enough to distinguish. Yeah. And then maybe something brighter over here. Not, I don't have a whole lot of choices, but yeah, maybe maybe this one. Or yeah, the blue there looks good. And then I guess I could do a brown there. Yeah, I think that's the way I'll do it. Put the original blue here because this is getting dark. <laughs> Just kind of on the fly. Okay, I think that looks great. It's awesome. Decide what goes in there. 
and we gotta decide what goes over here. Hmm. Okay, what's gonna look good here? Based on what I have left here. Okay. You know what? So we do dark colors here. I think that'll look good. Yeah, why not? And then possibly Okay, so that would go there. That can't go there because it's too much yellow. So it means that that pretty well has to go there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that one's going to go there. Yeah, I like it. Okay, now we got to figure out what goes there. Sort of tempted to put that green in there. That leaves me with, uh, hmm. Yeah, that'll be all right, but I think, uh, yeah, I think it'll be okay. Okay, so the green will go in there then. Sort of a mid green. I call it a mid green. I'm not sure. All right, and then I still have this one here that I'd set aside earlier. I think it was supposed to go there. Mm, don't think it's the right one for there, but okay. Anyway, I'll get these ones put on, and then we'll see. We'll do another another re evaluation. And that looks great. Yeah, I, I, I like the way that turned out. Okay, um, I think that's that was the end of all the stickers I tagged. No, I didn't. I still have that one. Okay, so that's gonna go there. Wow, I'm I'm really down to kind of the the end here. One thing is, I could put the cream color in there. That might look good. It's a little light for that area, but let's see. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do much better. Hmm. I could put the gray there and then uh, the lighter color over here. Hmm, and then that means I've got two of this. Well, yeah, that's, I don't really get much choice here. Either I put it there or I have to contend with having, that's not going to be good. Nor will that, because they'll be together. So really, I'm stuck. If I want to use this sheet, it's going to have to be here. Okay, or I'm going to put that one there. Yeah, and then I could put an, one of the orange ones over here. Uh, this orange, this really, really bright orange. I think that probably probably go right there. I think so. Um, either that or the the more stayed. Yeah, maybe the more stayed orange. And I don't need to, right? There's uh, the other choice would be this, this other blue green. Okay. All right.
right, that is a lovely orange. Look at that. Okay, and then this is going to be the yellow. I think that's I think that's good for in there. Um, but then that means I have uh, these three basically to, to put over here. Uh, if I put this other orange there, that's going to be quite bright on this side. I think that's the one that was originally supposed to go there. And that looks pretty good. Um, which would then leave the gray right there. Uh, not bad at all. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we'll do. Okay, I think the gray looks good. could put the gray there, which would then mean, no, I'd have, then I'd have uh, the orange over here. don't want that. Actually, this orange, uh, no, you don't want that orange there either. No, it's going to be this. And that will be that. So I think the orange and one of the, one of the yellows is what's not going to go. Uh, I'm going to evaluate this other yellow versus cream and have a look because it might actually make sense to put the cream in. Okay, we got that one, so it looks like I'm not going to use that one. And then, so I wanted to put yellow there. The question is, could I put cream instead? Hmm, that's a very, very light. Yeah, I think we need a darker color, so the cream will just go off. Wow, am I down to the last... Yeah, I'm down to the last three stickers. This is great. This is absolutely fantastic. And yes, I am going to just go ahead and do it. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. And that is that. Wow. So, two stickers I didn't use. These two. Oops, can't see it. All right. Wow. That is something. That is the dirt. D I R T. The 1.0 all stickered. <laughs> Wow, that turned out just fantastic. Wow, I'm really, really happy with this. Okay, well, that that's the, actually, that's the bonus content, isn't it? So um, you, if you watched the video from the beginning, you would have seen the uh, sticker reveal for both of these puzzles. That was a lot of stickering, but you know what? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. That's, uh, this was a lot of fun. All right, well, that's it, and I'm out of here.